back. Hey, 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 it's me, Tiffany the Budgetista, your favorite financial educator and the host of Money Glow Up from Yahoo Finance, where you we help you with the misunderstandings you might have about money, honey. I feel like it's my duty, my job, if you will, to help you with the money miss. Some things you might believe that may or may not be true, like this episode. Financial mistakes, is it too late? Can you make a mistake so big that you can't recover from it? I don't know, let's talk about it. In this capitalistic society, we can really have you believing that if you make financial mistakes, that you can't come back from them, right? Maybe it's your credit, you messed up on your credit. Does this mean you'll never get a job, you'll never get a house, you'll never get a car? If you don't start investing for retirement when you're really young, does this mean you're gonna have to work forever, Miss Cleo, right? What if you don't know or understand about credit laws or banking laws? If you make those mistakes, does this mean that you're gonna get locked up, they're gonna throw away the key and you'll never get out? Here's the thing, the National Financial Educators Council realized that they did a study and they found that financial mistakes cost us about $1,500 a year. That's about one month's rent for many people. That's $388 billion of mistakes in 2023 alone. It costs not to know. But just because you don't know, it doesn't mean it's all doom and gloom. There is redemption for those who seek it. And that's why I have my guest on the show today, Dr. Jamila Davis. I just call her Jay for sure, but you call her doctor, okay? Dr. Jamila Davis, she's an author, she's an entrepreneur, she's an activist, she's an educator, and she is the homie. Here's the thing, Jamila has helped so many people go from the financial mistakes that they've made to where they wanna be. You wanna know why? Because Jamila has made mistakes herself. From becoming a millionaire at the, 20, the, the tender age of 25 to some of the mistakes she's gonna share with us today, Jamila is the quintessential redemption story. So I can't wait to have her in the studio. Be on your best behavior. Jamila, welcome to the studio. Are there some financial mistakes that are too big to recover from? We're gonna find out. In the studio, welcome, Dr. Davis. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. Of course. So let's just get right into it. I'm going to be digging all up in your business. Okay. So you learned firsthand at a young age mm -hmm. that how much financial mistakes can cost us, cost right. you, right? Can you tell us, like, that story? So basically, for me, I was always curious about credit, right? So I was the girl that lied on the credit applications. So I started getting credit before I turned 18. Okay. I turned my seven into a four to allow me to be able to, like, experience it. And it was just that. Oh, I got approved. So I was just kind of playing with credit and seeing what it could do. And I learned that way. Okay. But not really realizing that, you know, like, lying on a credit application could cause an issue, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Right? So long story short, I went in from that to, like helping other people get credit because I became the credit girl, the girl that knew how to get things. Um, so I started with credit cards. I went into um, getting cars. Then I started getting luxury cars. And girl, the whole hood was lined up for me to help them. And at the time, I just thought I was helping my people. You know, I'm making up jobs, income, different things of that nature. And I guess for me, I looked at myself like a Robin Hood. I'm coming to help my people. And I did that. I helped people get a bunch of houses, a bunch of cars, a bunch of things, but ultimately, it ultimately led me to a 12 and a half year sentence wow. in federal prison. So at the time, so did you like fully, because you were really young, you were in your mm -hmm. 20s. I was actually 18, like when I started my business, I was like 18. I got credit before, so I was very, very young. Yeah. So did you really understand that it was illegal during that time? I don't know if I understand it was illegal, and I almost don't even know if I cared, right? <laughs> and that's how it is for some of us. Some of us, we just want the gratification, mm -hmm. and I know even now with this whole world of everybody doing the little hacks mm -hmm. to get this like you just need the money you want the money but you're not thinking or even understanding the real consequences yes. that comes with lying on those applications so here's the thing that you just said something about hacks so in a show prior i had my homework girl vivian too of your rich bff and mm -hmm. she's the queen of money hacks online and we actually talked about how there's so many of these money hacks that not only are they wrong and you're saying some of them are illegal and can land you in jail oh they definitely gonna land you in jail mm -hmm. especially if you do a big time like I yes. was. So I was doing it for not only myself, but for people. And I was 
helping people get a lot of things that they actually couldn't afford. Okay. So that's the other piece to it. That's why financial literacy is so important because you could obtain something and anybody could obtain anything, but can you keep it, yeah. right? Yeah. So my people didn't really know how to keep or manage what they were getting access to. And what that ended up with too was a knock on the door by the feds and me getting in trouble because I'm helping people get something that they shouldn't have got. So I think, you know, we've, we talked about this kind of privately, but, and I think you might have mentioned this even just maybe prior to the show, how a lot of stuff you didn't grow up knowing, you were curious, mm -hmm. and so you were figuring it out, almost self-teaching yourself. What do you wish you would have known? The information that you give people every day, Tiffany, you know, financial literacy is game changing. It's really the difference between the rich and the poor. I desired to be rich okay. and I didn't necessarily have someone teach me how to do it. So I was just figuring it out. And if I had somebody guide me and show me how to do it the right way, I wouldn't have spent 12 and a half years in prison. So, Jamila, you know, as a young person, you know, especially when it comes to the financial literacy piece, what advice do you wish you would have known when it comes to personal finance? And like what piece of advice are you like, if young people knew this, this could really be transformative for them? So I think it's also about like vehicles that you could use to grow your money Okay, that are not you know, don't take that much, like life insurance, right? I wish I would have gotten a whole life policy when I was much younger because now when I went came home from prison and I'm doing it, the rates and the numbers is just so much different. Like, that if I can know that saving a dollar a day, I know somebody, you know, used to say that when we was younger, like, it could be helpful. So every single dollar counts. And you really have to put away for a rainy day because you may have one. Well, just I'm like the, I the financial educator me, I'm not going to lie, Look at me closely. I don't like whole life insurance policies, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Okay. And that's why, you know, the way, because the cost versus the return, especially the return that you can get in other aspects. You know, I always respect everybody's opinion, but I'm like, I just have to raise my hand because one of the things that we do here, we can have open conversations. So I'm just like, no, that's what's up. No, but I love that. That, like, yes. That so if it's means. not even that, but mm -hmm. for me now, like, I have a term. I don't okay. even have whole yes. life. Yes. But what I'm saying is, like, affording it, yes. I couldn't even, you yeah. know what I mean? Because it wasn't in my particular category. Mm -hmm. But again, even that I could learn more from other people. So yes. listening to podcasts mm -hmm. and understanding and from folks who really know, I want to say I could learn, too. So what what things would you say young people if I if I'm 21 years old, 18 years old and like you, I'm hungry. I'm like, I'm tired of seeing like I don't want to wait. I, I want to like, where should I be? Like, what things should I be listening to like or learning? Should I be learning more about credit, learning more about investing, learning like what? I say entrepreneurship okay. because entrepreneurship ultimately saved my life. It saved my okay. life twice now. Right. Okay. So it's having that side hustle, learning how to make money so that you always actually are able to have it. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I have mastered was making money yeah. and creating businesses that make sense. And once you understand the fundamentals of business, mm. you could do it in any business, right? Love so it's that. like marketing and branding, right? These are transferable skills Ooh. that can transfer to any business that you have. So I would say learning and understanding business would be great because you could take that and you could use it for any business and I, that you I have. I mean, when I tell you I agree, yes, because there's no way preschool teacher Tiffany gets to do what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. You know, because you're right, all those skills you could put here, you could put here, here, it's public speaking. It's negotiating, right? It's um, confidence that it builds. Um, it introduces you to people. It teaches you how to network. So, yeah, entrepreneurship is, even if you never fully grow like some big old business, the skills you learn from that. Especially it's financial you, literacy. Yes. And it's just to the next power. So it was like we was talking about before about different vehicles that you could use to invest and save. Mm -hmm. When somebody gives you that information, they can never take it away. Who's talking about education. daddy? It's You know, Yvonne Daly <laughs> <'cause y 'all, laughs> They can't take it away. So even with me, they stripped me of everything and I was able to get it all back Ooh. over again because of knowledge, right? Ooh. So it's knowledge that you can't yeah. take from me. You could take something else, but you can't take away what I know. My father would always say knowledge once given can never be rescinded. And it's a real thing. Yes, because I'm like, living proof. It stripped everything, but they can't strip that knowledge. Correct. Yes. So understanding these things and learning about vehicles and ways to save and ways to generate money, mm -hmm. all you're going to do is go out and take what you know according to the circumstance that you're given and you're going to make it happen. 
I love that. So one of the things that I love that you do now is that, so you and I both did this after-school program mm-hmm. for Newark, New Jersey, Brick City Stand Up. Yes. Um, well, well, it was a summer program. But what I love is that you did an entrepreneurship program. Mm-hmm. And so what I see, it's almost like you're gonna you're kind of going back to go talk to young Jamila through these young kids. So what are you trying to teach them that you're like, you know what, if I would have known this, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring them to the right path. So what are you trying to show them through this program? So it's just that, like, in prison, I had this revelation. Like, I really got spiritually connected with God. And I told God if he gave me a second chance, this time I would do it right. Okay. And this time, you know, I was going to make sure my maker said job well done. So what I do with children is I teach them financial literacy, but business financial literacy, right? Because most of our kids want to get to the bag. But I want them to get to the bag with no holes in it. So I Ooh, teach I like them that. the fundamentals of business, how you set up, how you manage your money, how you budget your money, what does business really look like, and how you could take a dollar and literally turn that dollar into $10 and turn that $10 into 100 so forth and so on. So what I really love is that, like, not only, so you are now this, like, renowned, because I had heard about you before I met you. Mm -hmm. So you're now this renowned motivational speaker, doctor, you know, Mm -hmm. um, and a multimillionaire. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, because all of that was gone. You had to, you had to pay restitution. You had to pay back society. You lost, you know, all that real estate. So at 25, you figured out how to become a millionaire, Mm -hmm. you know, but not in the way that was sustainable or legal. But then you you come out and you're in this hole, Mm -hmm. you know, and you've been able to dig your way out. So like, what? obviously, I mean, anybody can hear you hears that, like, this is a woman who's smart. This is a woman who works hard. You know how to build relationships. That's Those are all things we were doing at 18. <laughs> but now you're like, so how? Because how long have you been, you know, how long ago have you... Did been you, home. Yes, been home. Mm-hmm. So seven years. Okay. And this time, Tiffany, I said, I'm building my house on bricks. Okay. Before I had the great big sand castle that when the big bad wolf came, he blew my whole house down. Not happening anymore. Mm-hmm. So when I came home, I was like, let me stop trying to speed. Let me build my house on bricks. Let me set up a financial foundation Mm -hmm. that will last, you know, you know, through the through the course of time. And that's just what I did. Oh, my gosh, Jamila. You are just blessing me with so much knowledge. But I need to take a quick break. Y'all be right back with us. We're going to pay some bills. We're going to hear more from Dr. Davis. And we are back. So what are some of the businesses that you do now? So I know you have, like, um, this after-school program. Mm-hmm. And I, think, I know people might be like, after-school program. I'm like, no, no, no. Contracts with different organizations mm-hmm. to teach constituents is quite lucrative. Is this, like, your core main business? Correct. That's one of my core main businesses. But I also have an apparel company, okay. Pink Passion Apparel. Mm-hmm. My um, clothes clothing line generated a little over $1.5 million Incredible. right now. Um, I also um, have Black Women's Lives Matter, Mm -hmm. which is a media company. We have all news black women. We tell stories and share stories about black women. Mm -hmm. I have Healing Bowl Productions. I'm doing film productions. Mm -hmm. So literally, I had great ideas, but I said, let me start from the thing that was going to be solid. Okay. And for me, what was solid was the government contracts. Mm. So when people think of nonprofit or giving back, they think that there's no money in that. Mm-hmm. But that's really a myth. Mm-hmm. I got lucrative contracts. I did a good job, came back, got more and more and more. And what we did was took the money from those things to start other ventures that. so that we could have multiple streams of income to support that work that we do in community. So smart, you know. So can you share some of the important tips that if that so if someone is sitting here now and they're saying, I made financial mistakes, mm-hmm. you know, I messed up on my credit. Mm-hmm. I have a friend who can't even open a bank account because as soon as she do, they say they're going to snatch her money, mm. you know. And so it just feels like the world is crumbling. Mm-hmm. Like what kind of words of wisdom can you give them that like, are there some financial mistakes you just can't come back from some, from someone who did? You can come back from everything. Okay. Sis, I came home with nothing but my two <laughs> prison shoes that I walked out that prison with. And I was able to build not just what I had before, but almost double in seven years. Mm. And it can happen for anyone. I think the first thing you have to do is create a plan. And you got to believe because faith is important, right? And I also believe in entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is important. You know, you can get a job and a check. And I'm not saying that's a bad way. But if you have a side hustle 
or some other gift or talent or something that you can do that can supplement your income, it could actually speed you up in the game. And then you could take that supplemental income that you're getting to save, to invest, and to do all the other things that you might not have got a chance to do before. So if I did it and I came home and I started from nothing, I want every single person that's listening and watching your podcast to know you could do it too. Just get wise. Create the plan and then stay focused and execute. I love that. So as a motivational speaker, I know that you have given so many pieces of advice to so many people. Is there kind of like this like other super secret sauce that you're like to your success? Like how? Good question. You know, like what's that? Purpose. Okay. You got to find the thing that God created you to do. Okay. Like everybody has a gift. Oftentimes we're trying to duplicate or work in someone else's gift whether do, rather than doing the introspective work mm -hmm. to really find out who we are and whose we are. Mm -hmm. I think when you find out what you are supposed to do, then the money will come. So for me, it wasn't about m making money when I was doing community work. It was about aligning in my purpose. And because I showed up every day and I did it with just such passion and joy and, you know, helped and the impact was so great, the money came. I love that. So I think for that is find your purpose and listen to good people. Like finding your podcast is a major thing. I listen to you. And then you put me on to other people. Like you put me on to your friend Lovey. Mm -hmm. And I got to listen to her podcast. And it's so inspiring. Guys, information is out there and it's for free. Mm -hmm. YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. Like find out what you want to do. Listen to others that's doing it. And get that information and knowledge that can help you cultivate your gifts. I love that. So you and I, because you actually came over and hang out, hung out with me. Mm -hmm. And there was something that I really loved about you. You said that you know one of your purposes is to help those who've been left out of the conversation totally. Yes. Because you're like, Tiffany, everybody don't read books. Mm -hmm. Everybody might not listen to podcasts. Mm -hmm. Everybody, so everybody might not have access. So for the person who's literally getting it out of the mud, who's struggling, maybe they, they've made mistakes that feel like they're so overwhelming. Like, one of the things I love about you, like, yo, I represent for that person who feels like it's over. Mm -hmm. You know, so what, like, what can you tell that person? I would tell that person, hold on. And you do have to fellowship. You can't be in silos. And you got to do something different. So I think we do the same things and we expect different results. And that's an insane person, as they say. You got to get around people who could teach you or could show you a better way. And it's finding that. So with you going to your house, I was like blown. Y'all, I had a conversation with, I left there so full and I'm like, that's what I need. So I think it's that sisterhood, mentorship. Who do you see around you? Who's the closest person that you can actually reach out to, that you can talk? And instead of hating on them, learn from them. Like, sis, what is it that you can show me and teach me? And if the person isn't so close to you, then you can find them through television, podcasts. And I believe in the law of attraction. Once you put that you're looking for that in the universe, Universe, it's going to show up. Yeah, to hold on, find fellowship. Lean and mentorship. Mentorship. Because if you're down in the ground, instead of trying to reinvent the wheel, all you got to do is link up with somebody who's already doing it, and then they can show you the way. It's going to help you get there a lot quicker. So I like, now I want to talk to, like, 18-year-old Jamila who started making these choices. What could a society at large have done, education, laws, like the community have done to make this better and easier for young people or people maybe who have made mistakes to see their way through versus everything is punishment? But can you imagine that instead of that, they would have said, you know what, Jamila, you are so smart. How do we put you out there sooner? Because now you're talking to the mm -hmm. kids, but they missed out on you for 12 years. That's right. You know, like that was a waste of, of a, such a, a Taxpayers' dollars. And your, your, your genius mind, right? Oh, so what could community and society do to support people who, if given the right path, can go down that path and use their genius in that way? Okay. So basically my life work, right, and my PhD, even my dissertation, was using life coaching to dethrone the trauma to prison pipeline. Mm -hmm. So trauma is a real reason why women, you know, offend. It's dealing with those unresolved issues and, you know, low self-esteem and all the things that will cause you to risk your life for someone else to do something that you're not supposed to do. So I feel like it's more programs around that, like really helping people to heal. Mental health and trauma and all these things is a real thing in our neighborhood. So even before we could give somebody financial literacy, right, even before we can stand them up to have a better future, we got to help them go back in the past and deal with the issues that caused them to be in the very place that they're in. 
Wow. I never thought about that. That's like, it's the healing and the, tr- it's the, the thing before the thing. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it's very because if I'm not whole, I can't even receive what you're giving me because I'm broke down. Yeah. So I think the restoration piece for me, and this is what I do in community, is to help with mental health. And we don't realize so many people, so many people who are even well off, because some people can sustain and get it, and because they're smart, but then they can't keep it. So I think that a part of financial literacy and mental health actually have to be meshed together yeah. in order to, to to create sustainable wealth for folks. Okay. Well, I mean, honestly, Jamila, you have been like such an inspiration. I know there might be some people who might have some judgment, but I'm like, whatever. Because, <laughs> I mean, because, you know, people judge and it's like, and yet here you are with your whole doctorate. Yeah. God bless them. I mean, right? Here you are. So many people fall, Tiffany, they just didn't get caught. Yeah. Right? Yes. So at the end of the day, it's okay for me. And for me, and I think that's why we got to stop worrying about what people think yeah. and what God thinks. Yes. Right? This time, I want to hear my maker say, job well done. And I think I'm I'm about there, sis. Yeah, I think so, so I'm too. All right. I think so, too. When <laughs> I saw, like, like, you know, the way, so I, we ended, I, I saw, I went to a concert, Lauren Hill, the Fugees, uh-huh. and um, I saw how, like, there was all these young people at the, it was a Prudential Center, mm-hmm. which is a huge, huge, huge center, bending mm-hmm. with all their wares. And I remember thinking at the time, oh, that's amazing that they let these kids, but that was you. Those are our students. Yes. So I'm good friends with Lauren. Um, God bless Miss Hill. She gave my students the opportunity to vend. So we teach them teen entrepreneurship, and then we give them money to start their own businesses, and then they do pop-up shops in community because those pop-up shops are how they get their income. So, you know, Lauren got got a chance to see what was happening, and she gave our students an opportunity that was life-changing for many of them. And so what I love is that you have effectively reparented or reprogrammed 18-year-old Jamila. You have come into the community, found her, and given her opportunity. Opportunities and we thank you for that. You're amazing. Full circle moment. And you're amazing too. So I'm so grateful again for this opportunity for someone who inspires so many of our people to be sitting here as your guest. I feel distinguished. And it's us collectively making a difference in our community. That's what's really going to change and break these cycles. I agree. Well, everybody knows I like to do a little bit of a wrap up, okay? Because the teacher in me is like, Dr. Davis has taught us so many amazing things. So I'm going to try to wrap up some of the core lessons that I learned today. You let me know if I get an A or not. Okay. All right. One, number one, let's just get this out the way. You absolutely can come back from financial mistakes, right? Yes. Right? Two, that... You have to make sure that where you get your advice from aligns with what is legal, what Mm -hmm. is right, and what is your purpose. That's right. Right? And then probably like the third thing that I really took away is that... I don't know that there's grace for those who seek it. One of my friends, um, um, Demetria, um, always says that there is grace for those who seek it. And that even if you've made mistakes, even if they're mistakes that you did kind of purposefully because you thought it's not that bad you know no matter what that thing is that there is a turnaround and those same skills that you use to make the mistake are the same skills that you can use to build on a stronger house i love that right don't get that that. out out. (laughs) all right (laughs) y'all know so i want to say thank you jamila for coming on my podcast it's my pleasure (laughs) as y'all know if you need any sort of financial help if you've made financial mistakes or otherwise you can go get help on my favorite site, a.k.a. my site, getgoodwithmoney.com. This is Money Glow Up from Yahoo Finance. You can watch us on yahoofinance.com. Wherever you get podcasts, you can stream us there every single Thursday, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And just remember that you're not alone in this. Um, As myself, Tiffany the Budgetista, I I have made so many financial mistakes and no financial mistake is so big that you cannot dig your way out of. Until next week, we'll see you at Money Glow Up. See you soon. This content was not intended to be financial advice and should not be used as a substitute for professional financial services.